to Talent Hub TV episode 13. We're here with Sadia and Peter from Accelerus Consulting today. Thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, um, thank you. We've got some interesting topics, uh, a little bit different from, from the kind of discussion we've had in the past. So we're talking about financial force and the financial force market today. Um, so can you tell us a bit about both of your backgrounds and um, I guess who you are and where, where you've come to to get to this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we both come from a finance and accounting background. Uh, Peter has over 30 years of experience in a mixture of roles across various industries. I myself am more from audit and finance background where I've had a lot of finance roles. Um, and I think on our first joint project we, uh, we realized we had a shared passion and that was to hope to not be a cost on the books for a company. Very often accountants are just seen as a cost um, within an organization, but we really want to add value and be able to do that. So we found this way of doing it through Accelerus and adding value, creating efficiencies, giving organizations the ability to see data um, that they wouldn't have been able to and be able to make better business decisions. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. I think she answered for me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so coming from an accounting uh, background, finance backgrounds, um, how have you found your way into the sales world? Um, do you want to answer in the whole Yeah, well, I think, you know, it's probably a little bit different for each of us. Um, on my side, um, my, I, I came into it because I spotted financial force being on the Salesforce platform in a former role. Uh, when I was a CFO for a private equity firm. Um, and I, uh, realized that it was probably a very good business opportunity for me because we didn't have any representation. The company didn't have any representation here in Australia, I'm sure. And um, so I ended up getting myself onto one of the first implementations. In fact, the very first locally implemented uh, version of software of, of Finish Force in, in Australia. And actually, that's where I met Australia. Okay. And so, Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so from my perspective, uh, the company I was working for at the time, four and a half years ago, decided to go on the Force.com platform, implement Sales Cloud, and a few of the Financial Force products. So I think I guess I, I lucked out, and I also, uh, it was a good thing that I put my hand up and said, oh, I'll PM this, and I'll take charge of this project. And yeah. That's where we worked together a yeah. lot, okay. and that's where I got to understand the benefits of the Force.com platform and having everything into one, you know, one place to be able to pull reports, um, reports in such a way to have more visibility, be able to make better business decisions. And at that point in time, when I was in that job, um, I, I really saw the benefit and that of having someone with a business background and come into this space to lead the implementation and be able to understand the opportunities that businesses have and challenges and pain points that businesses have sure. not only in accounting but within the whole organization um, and to i guess to leverage our backgrounds into this space okay so had you um, coming from a finance background had you always had a, a like an it flair or a technology flair and an interest in that space yeah um i think we're both We've always been both techie, like from Peter, you were telling me. Than me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Peter was telling me about his father being, um, uh -huh. about his father being when the computers came out, he was always on top of the game, and now his father has Google Home and uh, yeah. in every room, and he's, he's quite a techie person. Yeah. I think that's where Peter got some of his geekiness. <laughs> uh, myself, it's um, the influence was from my eldest brother, who then did computer engineering, um, but I think really essentially we don't see ourselves as technologists, we no. see ourselves, how would you see ourselves, uh, Peter? I think, we're, I, think we're, we're, I see myself as, as a business guy, you know, um, I'd say 30%, 40% accountant, uh, but to, you know, I'm interested in finance, I'm interested in business, sure. uh, so it's not really just about accounting. Yeah. Uh, but you know the technology part is more just an enabler. Sure. Very excited about Salesforce though. Yeah. I mean the platform is an amazing thing. Sure. Really, it's a very special thing. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, it is a big part, but it's not. It's not the thing that drives us. Sure. And that that leads me on. You're excited about Salesforce. So, 
what's the relationship um, financial force, sales force, for anyone that doesn't know? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask this one? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, so I think the important thing, and I'm saying this for the benefit of anybody who might watch this uh, who uh, doesn't work in the sales force space, is to understand that it's probably wrong to say that Salesforce is a CRM, a customer relationship management yeah. system. It's as wrong to say that as it is to say that Amazon sells books, <laughs> or that Excel that that Microsoft sells Excel. Sure, but that's not what those companies do. Yeah, yeah. And I think the same is is increasingly becoming true for Salesforce. Sure, is that Salesforce is a technology platform. CRM is an integral part of that in the same way as Excel is an important part of what Microsoft does. Sure. Um, but what, as a platform, it basically gives you the opportunity to build anything, almost anything you want yep. on, that, on that, in that environment, uh, to run your whole enterprises systems on that, in that environment. Sure. Um, and that's really the basis of the financial forces relationship with Salesforce, <laughs> is that it, the financial force is the largest um, independent software vendor on the platform. And uh, the functionality that it provides is is similar to what you would get from major ERP systems, you know, like SAP or Oracle, mm -hmm. in terms of the depth functionality that you would get. Sure. And obviously those systems are huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have many, many years. Yeah. But um, they, uh, that's essentially what it is. Okay, cool. Yeah. And um, so talking about the, the platform, so it's built on force.com, um, who's it for? Like what, what's the typical client that, that would utilize or get get value from financial course. Am I doing this one? Yeah, sure. Um, I, well, obviously, the, 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 comp, the typical client would be one that would be using Salesforce in the first place. Um, so they have to use Salesforce? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't run. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like you've got to buy. You got to buy a Windows machine yeah. if you're going to run a Windows application. Sure. So, so they may not be tool. using Sales Cloud. They just need to be on the Salesforce platform. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd say you know the types of customers that we often end up with are professional services organisations where they want to manage their business from um, from lead through to through the definition of projects, having staff booking time or managing a project through the billing, collections, managing the profitability of projects and so on. Um, another typical type is where um, we have uh, perhaps uh, businesses that have recurring um, type revenue where you're building the kind of service, service uh, managed service kind mm -hmm. of service where you're billing the customer many times for it every month for a sure. particular service that you're providing. Um, or in companies where they have um, fairly complicated uh, supply chain requirements. Not so much manufacturing, but where, for example, uh, there's a lot involved in actually delivering the product to the customer. Yeah. Yeah. So it might be inventory that they're selling, or it might be uh, uh, a combination of product and, and inventory and service. Sure. And that sort of thing. So that's the most common that that I've come across. Okay. Uh, but you know. Any business can really run. It's just a technology platform. Sure. Accounting is accounting. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you've mentioned a couple of the other ERPs, which are obviously, as you said, huge, big global names. Um, to their financial force are having growth, like big growth yeah. in the region, um, globally, but in the region. Yeah. Are you now seeing them like, taking some of that business off of those big ERPs? Like when, when you are doing an implementation of financial force, where are companies coming from typically? Yeah. Well, the ones I've seen are not so much going from a larger ERP to um, and more known and more, I guess, with more history, uh, and then going to financial force. I've seen probably the, the opposite, where they prefer typically on zero and YOB and go, moving on to financial force because they need a, process, a system that's more scalable and sure. more automated um, and will give them more visibility. But from yeah, no, I'd agree that it's not only my but zero, it's you know, quite a lot of other mid-tier, older mid-tier systems. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's usually, most of our clients are, are companies that are, that are experiencing growth, they're upgrading the systems that they're on, their businesses are becoming more complicated, and, um, and they, they want to be able to 
builds, and they're unique, you know, because that's the great thing with Salesforce is that you can make it behave the way that you want it to behave. You sure. don't have to, you know, follow the so-called industry best practice. Yeah, so, for sure. So, uh, so and Fun Express is easily customizable. With Very much so. Same, same, same way as Salesforce. Salesforce. You know, you create an object, create an extra field. Okay. Create some automations. That sure. It's all declarative. Yeah. It's, it's great. Okay. So really, you said that any company could, in theory, use it. But we're seeing Salesforce become more enterprise level now. So correct. You know, you name it, they've got it at the moment. We're seeing yeah. the Telstra's of this world do big projects. Absolutely. Is there a ceiling for for Financials? No, I don't think there is. I mean, you know, we've got big customers like uh, Google. Um, and Salesforce itself use okay. our products, uh, and we have uh, companies in Australia. For example, we're a big accounting firm. Australia has a thousand uh, uh, users of the system. Yeah. So they're capturing their timesheets and they're and, and doing all the project management through that. Sure. Um, so I, I don't believe that there really is much of a ceiling uh, in the longer term. Okay. It, it, it's really just a, a growing awareness of the kind of market that. Mm -hmm. That this is a an acceptable platform upon which you can run your enterprises. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I think that awareness is, is definitely coming. So that's, yeah. that's a, a good thing. Yeah. Um, what are the, the big challenges that you see uh, regularly on an implementation of financial costs? Um, Do you want me to go? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say that. A common challenge, but I think it's a problem that every um, uh, every system, you know, no matter what system you put in, you're going to have this challenge. I think one of the most common ones is just the journey the client needs to take in terms of understanding what's really involved. You know, it's not um, almost always it's it's more complicated than they imagined it would be. Sure. Yeah, and so. And that's our job, essentially, is to help them through that journey mm -hmm. uh, and lead the way yeah. through that thinking process. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, sorry, have you seen anything aside from, from that? No, I say that. I think that's a really good point. And, it's, and our approach and the way we deal with that is really to have that upfront conversation to explain to them um, that if they want this the system implementation to be a success, that they need to invest their time in it. Sure. And we try to help them and fill the, the gap that may be present as much as possible. But that's definitely one of the key ones. And also, I think I'd say another challenge for certain organizations is trying to foresee, trying to put away the current processes that they have, putting away the current system that they have, and thinking what's ideal for the company and the organization. Sure. And where is the company going to build a system that's not a replicate replication of what was done or what they currently have? We want to improve processes. We want to improve the system for the company and for them to start thinking, well, ideally, what is it that we want in our system? How do we want to use our system to be able to create efficiencies? And how do I get information from the sales guy all the way to the finance team um, in the best way and automated way as possible? So, it's trying to come out of what they're currently doing and try to think of what they would like to see in the future. Sure. So yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, and I'd also add to say that very often, because we're dealing with different functions of the organization, with finance, with the sales guys, we've got the production guys, they don't actually know the, each other's problems. Yeah, that sure. Way. So it's very often that we're, we're actually leading the process of helping them discover their own problems. Yeah. And, uh, and then and then building the, Shape the solution around yeah, that. So, so to, to have a successful project, um, what are the kind of key roles that you, you need um, to deliver a successful financial course program? Yeah, uh, yeah you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we we feel pretty, um, pretty strongly that coming from a business background and for the, I guess the implementation project team to have as much business background as possible to identify with the client their requirements, their pain points, understand what is causing them issues, understanding what, um, let's say, the, the finance team or the project guys, what they're struggling to get the information on or even pushing information. So when you understand the business, when you understand what the organization is looking to achieve and what, what potential there is, then you're very much able to configure the system and 
um, guide the client to build processes that will be optimal for the company. Sure. Um, obviously, that's not to say that there, there needs to be um, you know, Salesforce skills as well involved. So a Salesforce administrator on the client side is always um, highly recommended. And in some cases, Salesforce developers are needed. Um, but a project manager is another skill. But I think within all these roles, it's important to appreciate the fact that the more business knowledge they have, the better it is. At the end of the day, the business stakeholders that are guiding the consultants to build the system want to be speaking to people who understand the requirements in full so they're not constantly clarifying or going back and forth and saying oh well this is what you need no that's not quite what i'm looking for yeah. and not every requirement is explicitly said so yeah. um, i think it helps a lot to be able to as a consultant um, know i suppose to done some degree more about how you do that thing that even the client would know. So, yeah. that, because very often the client says they want something, and then we go, well, but why? Why exactly? Yeah. Do you need that? Sure. And then when they explain, you're up, but you could actually solve that problem this way. Sure. And they are, oh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah. And then that actually makes it so much easier. Sure. Yeah. We we find that in the the Salesforce space quite often, a company will go through a project and they don't really know at the end of it how they keep this thing ticking over. You yeah. know. Um, like I think they bought the licenses. They think great, yeah. it looks after itself. <laughs> do you, do you kind of get that sense as well in the financial plus world? Do you do, like how does yeah. a company keep it keep it um, ticking over and improving it and, and yeah. so on after go? Like, yeah. We're very much aware of, of the the reality that that happens, and and so we always try our, our approach at Accelerus is to try to take the client uh, to make the client take the lead on the project. Sure. Um, to try to get them as involved as possible so that they can then maintain the solution in the long run. We also highly recommend a Salesforce administrator, but for that person to be involved from the get-go of the implementation, sure. so they understand the reasons behind why um, certain things were structured and architected in that specific way. Yeah. Um, we also believe that, well, through the... Through the, so, so I'm not sure if you want me to get into this or not, but it's also important post go live, it's important to do assessments of the company and the organization to see where it's going and to make sure that the system is maintained and is growing with the company. Sure. And that they don't get to a point where, oh, well, there's a new transaction or a new business process that's happening and they're dealing with, I don't know, a, a, new, um, a new structure and that. They, they build manual processes around that. We need to make sure that the system grows with the company and can cater for that new need. Okay. So how, how did um, Accelerus come together? How, how are we here today with you guys sat there as a business partners? Yeah. Well, it's been an exciting journey. <laughs> Peter's laughing. <laughs> um, well, we first... So going back to when we first met, it was four and a half years ago. I was working on the implementation as a client. Peter was on there as a, uh, on the consulting team, um, and we've been working ever since. It's just until recently, earlier this year, that Peter has joined Accelerus. Um, but a bit of history on Accelerus is uh, I founded Accelerus two years ago, and it's been a, a long journey, a, a good, exciting journey of working with a lot of clients. Sure. We've obtained the Financial Force Partnership status, and we're very excited to have brought Peter um, on board earlier this year to scale up and bring and, and bring the company to the next level. Sure. So. And what's uh, what's exciting from from the market? Like what 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 are you guys seeing, and uh, where do you feel you're going to add the most value? Yeah. Oh, I think that uh, there's a wonderful future for um, uh, ERP for enterprise systems on the on the Salesforce platform. Sure. And uh, Financial Force is incredibly well positioned to be able to uh, benefit from that. Uh, the growing, growing uh, awareness of, of, of business, of, of the value that Salesforce, the Salesforce platform can offer them. And um, so we're just uh, looking forward to riding that wave and uh, helping organizations to really get the most they can out of that. Sure. And is there a particular sweet spot for you guys or anything financial forces that you're, you're eager to help clients with and talk about or is there an area? Well, I think our, our, our sweet spot is really our, the, 
business knowledge and backup that we bring to to the the process of implementing our software. So, uh, so I guess to some degree we would contrast ourselves with with others who might have a more technical bent. Um, we are very focused on on uh, ensuring that our, our clients realise business benefits out of out of that. Not to say the others aren't, but that's our that's our, our real focus. Sure. And uh, yeah. And from a platform perspective, is there anything that you see um, changing or coming into the, the financial course market that excites you over the, the coming months? Well, I think what's really exciting for both of us is just the, the there's no limit to you know another vendor coming onto the platform and providing another another service. So yeah, I mean it's yeah. So I think also um, the, the platform itself is growing. You know, the introduction of Einstein Analytics, for example, in itself, uh, you know, every account would know we live off reports. Yeah, yeah. We we need to be able to surface information. Sure. So uh, that um, that uh, that functionality in itself is uh, opens unlocks enormous opportunities. Sure. For us to be able to service the needs of businesses. Okay. So um, and there's new stuff coming in all the time. Yeah. You know, sure. Because, uh, you know, Okay, well thank you very much for coming today guys, it's been great to have this chat. Uh, we'll share your, your company details on the post as well, and um, and yeah, we, we're excited to see the, uh, the journey and the growth, so thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Ben. Thank you. Thanks.